Welcome to TPM Vids Disney Beat, where we talk about all things Disney. If you're new to the channel and like what you see, hit that subscribe button and click the bell icon to be notified when we upload a new video. You can also find us on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. 2022 has been another eventful year for the Disney theme parks. We continue to see many changes from the return of beloved shows, to new rides and hotels, anniversary milestones, and so much more. On Instagram and in the YouTube community tab, I asked you all to weigh in on the best and worst at the Disney theme parks this year. So thanks to all your suggestions, let's explore Walt Disney World, Disneyland in California, and Disneyland Paris as we count down the top 10 best and worst of the Disney theme parks in 2022. Number 10. The best thing you all said that happened in 2022 was Bob Iger returning as CEO of the Walt Disney Company. Bob Chapek had been the CEO since February of 2020, but in an unexpected turn of events, Chapek was fired at the end of November this year. I found out the news as soon as I landed from a flight and was floored. Now, it's no secret that Chapek faced backlash throughout the years. His poor leadership style took the power out of the creative's hands, which is a huge problem for an entertainment company. Not to mention his decisions, which nickel and dimed guests at the parks. Sure, Josh Tomorrow was chairman, but Chapek was the puppet master. Bringing Iger back was a necessary step for the company to move forward to regain its creativity and overall brand. Bob Iger has already been spotted at Disneyland, accompanied by Tomorrow, and although it probably will be a few months before we see any major impact, it's such a breath of fresh air having him back. Now what's one thing you'd want Iger to change at the theme parks? Comment below! Number 9 the opening of Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind at Epcot was definitely one of the best things in 2022. Since opening in May, it's quickly become a fan favorite, and dare I say it's one of the best rides at Walt Disney World. I think there will always be discussions about whether Guardians fits into Epcot, but the whole premise of the pavilion, including the Galaxarium, brings that edutainment component of the original Epcot back to life. I was a bit disappointed that we didn't get an animatronic in the pre-show, but they did redeem themselves with the physical ride. Cosmic Rewind is packed with thrill from its reverse high-speed launch to the spinning ride vehicles. With a track length of 5,577 feet, Cosmic Rewind became the longest indoor steel roller coaster in the world. It also has a pretty solid runtime, coming in at 3 minutes and 30 seconds. Along with six different songs that are chosen at random, this creates a unique experience each time you ride. Overall, Guardians of the Galaxy Cosmic Rewind was a very welcome addition to Epcot. Number 8 in November of 2022, we finally saw the return of Fantasmic at Hollywood Studios. Disney replaced the original Pocahontas segment with a brand new scene featuring Disney heroes. It now includes Pocahontas, Aladdin, Mulan, Elsa, and Moana. At times, the scene felt like it lacked performers, but the orchestrations and lighting design of the scenes worked really well. It actually added an extra three minutes to the overall runtime of the show. So this is one time where Disney actually didn't cut something back. In addition to the new scene, Disney upgraded the lighting package and most of the original score remained aside from the new segment. I'm really glad they didn't use the Disneyland orchestrations and vocals. I was surprised they didn't replace the monkey costumes with the ones from Disneyland, but overall, it feels like a fresh version of a very familiar show. If you are interested, there is a full multi-angle video of the new show here on the channel. Number 7 March 6th marked the beginning of the 30th anniversary celebration at Disneyland Paris. It's set to run through September 30th, 2023, and I gotta say, this celebration is much better executed than Walt Disney World's 50th. And both were working with decreased budgets. Here at Disneyland Paris, Dream and Shine Brighter was their parade and show for the celebration, and the theme song Ready for the Ride is such a bop. 
It's just full of so much joy and energy, and these performers were all outstanding. Around Central Plaza, there were the Gardens of Wonder statues and mobiles that brought 30 Disney characters to life through these whimsical kinetics. So much more intricate than the gold 50th statues. And to end your night, Disney D-Light happens at the beginning of each performance of Disney Illuminations. This was a big wow moment and such a clever use of drones. It added something special to the nighttime entertainment that didn't need to be a full new show. Just something that acknowledged the celebration. It took Magic Kingdom 11 months to add their 50th tag to the beginning of Disney Enchantment. And I bet there's a lot of people who didn't even know it changed. See, now just imagine if we got this from the beginning of the celebration on October 1st, and not almost a year later. It's a nice, heartfelt intro that pays tribute to the anniversary and the park. It's what we all wanted from the beginning. Number 6 a lot of Walt Disney World Entertainment returned this year that hadn't been seen since March of 2020. The biggest return was the Festival of Fantasy Parade at Magic Kingdom. It made its debut on its 8th anniversary where it now plays two performances a day. The Tumble Monkeys returned to Festival of the Lion King, the original staging returned to Beauty and the Beast live on stage, Hocus Pocus Villain Spectacular and the Boo to You Parade made their return to Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party, and the Hoop De Doo Musical Review made its grand return to Pioneer Hall at Fort Wilderness. Disney also debuted Mickey's Magical Friendship Fair, which replaced Mickey's Royal Friendship Fair. The Castle Stage Show received a brand new opening and finale number called Where the Magic Feels Like Home, and the show still features Princess and the Frog, Tangled, and Frozen. Then the Adventure Friends Cavalcade made its debut in February at Magic Kingdom, and this marked the debut of Miguel from Coco at Walt Disney World, then later in the year it gave Mirabelle from Encanto her Walt Disney World debut. Overall, one of the most exciting moments would have to be the return of traditional character meet and greets at all the theme parks, where now you can finally hug your favorite Disney pals once again. Number 5 Over at the Disneyland Resort in California, 2022 marked the return of all the nighttime spectaculars. This included Disneyland Forever, Fantasmic, and World of Color. And just when we thought it glowed away forever, Disney brought back the Main Street Electrical Parade to celebrate its 50th anniversary. This year, a brand new grand finale float was added, themed to It's a Small World. It featured many classic Disney characters as well as some new favorites like Miguel from Coco and Mirabelle and Antonio from Encanto. The finale added some fresh energy to an old parade, and it was the first time characters from Encanto were added to an attraction, aside from the meet and greet. Both the Main Street Electrical Parade along with Disneyland Forever were limited runs which ended on September 1st. Knowing Disney though, this wasn't goodbye forever and who knows when they'll show up next. Number 4 Avengers Campus at the Walt Disney Studios Park had its grand opening in June, and this was one edition that had mixed votes. Now, Avengers Campus was the first phase of a multi-year transformation for the Walt Disney Studios Park. It's small in size like its California counterpart, but it's not a carbon copy of the land. From its three different eateries to characters and stunt shows, plus two attractions, there's quite a lot here, but the land itself feels a bit lifeless. There aren't enough kinetics. It seems like the guests in Paris are reacting fairly well to Spider-Man Web Adventure, which is a clone of Web Slingers in California. It's a fun ride for what it is and it's something new for the park, but Disney didn't even bother updating it to fit the campus in Paris. There's still the scene with Guardians of the Galaxy, unless they have plans to also overlay Tower here, which maybe that's something in the future that we don't know about. Then there is Avengers Flight Force, which was a retheme of Rock and Roller Coaster. This is what a lot of you said was one of the worst things this year. We all know the track layout of Rock and Roller Coaster is great, but the projection and lighting effects in the show building could have offered a lot more. 
In terms of the exterior, Flight Force was a huge improvement, but the physical ride and story execution was a little underwhelming. Number 3 in 2022, Finding Nemo the Big Blue and Beyond replaced Finding Nemo the Musical at Animal Kingdom. This was more or less an updated show that cut the runtime down to 25 minutes from 35 and built new sets inspired by paper sculptures. The LED wall in the back was a nice improvement, but the paper sculpture inspiration cheapened the sets. Nemo's story is now told by the fish from the Marine Life Institute, and they use all the songs from the original show. The performers are fantastic, and it was great seeing a lot of familiar faces return to the show, but by condensing the story, a lot of its heartfelt moments are rushed or just non-existent. Finding Nemo the Musical was my favorite show at Walt Disney World, and I didn't think it needed any changes, although many people would disagree. Now it feels a lot more like a theme park show, which is good, I guess. I'm just glad there's a show in theater in the wild again. Number 2 There was an overwhelming response saying the official announcement of the Splash Mountain closing date was the worst thing to happen this year. I don't agree with that, but it's the power of the votes. Now, if you didn't know, beginning January 23rd, Splash Mountain at Magic Kingdom will be closed to start its transformation into Tiana's Bayou Adventure. Now, yes, we will be without the log flume ride for a couple years, but Tiana's Bayou Adventure looks very, very promising. When it opens in late 2024, I think it's gonna be a hit, and I can't wait to hear what the soundtrack sounds like. I mean, given the state of Splash Mountain at Magic Kingdom, it's definitely ready for something new. With the closing date announcement, Disney shared this piece of concept art of a new scene that'll take place right after what's now the drop on Slippin' Falls. This is where we'll be entering the bayou, and it looks like there will be quite a few animatronics, including Tiana, Louis, and a band of six adorable critters. At D23, they showed us a detailed look at the otter. As more and more concept art gets released, this transformation looks really promising. No date has been set yet for the closing of Splash Mountain at Disneyland, but that will be announced at a later time. Number 1 Out of hundreds of responses, only one viewer mentioned Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser, and I think that speaks volumes of the hotel's success. When it opened in March, there was a lot of excitement from Star Wars fans, but at its premium price, it's difficult to justify spending upwards of $5,000 for a two-night immersive experience. There are currently 208 reviews on Google with an overall rating of 4.1. Most of the criticism you read even from people who enjoyed the experience was that the food was mediocre, the rooms were too small, and overall it just wasn't worth the high price point. Now it did sell out for the first few months, but looking at the calendar right now, 95% of dates through September of next year still have availability. If this continues, Disney will need to do something about the price, which is what's keeping most people away. I personally think this should have been designed with the option to have day guests. You can pay a single day admission that includes all the immersive activities during the day and a meal, something that's a bit more affordable. It'll be really interesting to see what happens with this hotel next year. So what would you say was the best and worst of 2022 at the Disney theme parks? I'd love to know. Leave a comment down below to start a conversation and don't forget to hit that like button if you enjoyed the video.